profiling pro and semi-pro Rocket League players who are looking and aspiring to greater things. Today, Happy Meal. A favorite among fans locally, a semi-finalist in regional number one for Sub-Saharan Africa, and recently, he and his team picked up by Bravado Gaming. All right, cool. So, happy. Let's get ourselves into a game. The in real life name. What's your What's your What's your name? My name is David. Where are you based? I'm in Johannesburg. Happy Meal. Let's talk about that. And I don't actually have uh, the best answer to it. So I've had this account for a long time, and one day I had this uh, strange intuition to call it Happy Meal. And yeah, I've never changed it. So, so how long have you been Happy Meal? Probably like since 2012 or even. Okay, so uh, it's so it's so it's been long established. All right, how old are you? I'm now 22. And what platform? Mm, uh, PC, PC Steam. Always been on Steam, or did you immigrate from a console? No, no, I've I started uh, on computer. I got PC, and I've uh, played on PC ever since. And controller or keyboard mouse? I am a controller player. What what controller? I started on Xbox 360. And that broke. I got myself an Xbox One controller, and within like I'd say like a week, it, it broke. Uh, and then I got another one, and that broke. So I eventually decided, all right, it's time to uh, get myself a PS4 controller. And then uh, a year ago, I got a PS5 controller, and that's what Ooh. I'm using now. All right, hours in Rocket League. Uh, ro like six thousand. Six and a half thousand. Your peak peak MMR and current MMR? Uh, my peak MMR. Um, I think in season 14. I think it was like uh, 1780 or 1790. Okay. I think my current MMR uh, in like the high, like my highest MMR right now. I think it's like 1670 or 1660 and twos. I'll be honest, I don't play rank much. So, okay, if you're not playing rank, what are you doing? Is it sort of scrimming? Yeah, I, I, I just train. I just sit free play and custom training, and you know, I, I do play rank um, like when I, when I need to. I yes. just, it's good to play ranks, but I, I don't really like the experience on 200 ping. Um, your car main. I see we you're uh, you're in the octane now. Is that is that what you're mostly in? Nah, probably my probably my most used car, and I think like if you see me playing on oh I'm just, on any on any stream, it's probably the Fennec. It's my most used uh, like competitive car. Do you have a favorite mechanic? Favorite mechanic? Yeah. I won't lie, like, flip resets really do speak to me. But yeah, generally speaking, like, any flip reset into into anything. I, I think a normal flip reset is, like, it's okay. Yes. But more specifically, like, a flip reset into a musty or flip reset into another flip reset. Just the... Uh, I think having knowing how to do the skill is very important in, yes. like, high-level Rock League now. And it's my, probably my favorite. What is your typical Indeed. Rocket League routine? Oh, yeah, so I guess routine is a strong word uh, to call okay. what I do because... Um, but generally, like, I get on the game, uh, and I, once I get on the game, I know I've pretty much dedicated, like, the next, I'd say, minimum four hours into the game, minimum. I, I, you know, I don't want to sit here and, and tell you that, like, I, I, playing the game for two hours, uh, like, per, per session is, is tough for me because I feel like a little improvement is, 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 is gained. Since I, I usually look for weaknesses, like, in my game, uh, each day before, and, and, and I'll find those weaknesses either through like a, a statistic or, or, or just something I feel and then I'll, I'll work on those so I guess the most recent thing I'm working on is like my, my aerial accuracy so I've just been in single training packs and uh, just like going up for basic aerial swing them uh, in all four corners of the goals stuff like that challenging myself as much as possible all right so let's talk about the your start in Rocket League I actually uh, my friends and I we we used to play a lot of um, like online games together CSGO and I guess uh, and, uh, like armor and you know, just a whole bunch of multiplayer competitive games and the one day I, I saw like a whole bunch of reviews coming out of rock league and i'm like what is this game so i decided that i'm gonna crack the game and just test it to see what it's like before i buy it because at that time you know it was still it's like to buy it um, yes. and i had no idea like my computer could run it so i just like cool let me crack it so i did exactly that and it was also on uh, keyboard i i'd played it for like maybe half an hour uh, on keyboard actually and i was hooked oh, i was like what is this this game is amazing late 2016 i believe that was when i like saw the game for the first time and yeah i guess uh, over time i think as i think it's a very common it's like story players will play with their friends and just enjoy the game but i obviously enjoyed it more than they did so yes. naturally i would progress further in the game than they would now uh, six that six thousand hours later is there is there something you wish you knew 
a lot earlier. Yeah, so I think if I spend a bit more time like watching the pros, because I I, I think my inspiration when I first started was the freestylers. I watched Jay's play, um, and that was like when he basically that was like his prime. I, I based <coughs> a lot of my my in-game decisions of freestyling, which is I guess okay, but it, it kind of put a unrealistic expectation in my mind of what should be happening in games. Uh, I'm not upset by that, but definitely yes. it changed the way I practice, the, the way I focus my time. But if instead if I watched the pros, maybe I would have been a bit, uh, a bit better, a little bit early on. And what are your interests and hobbies outside of Rocket League? I, I am studying. I'm currently studying uh, law through NISA. Oh, nice shot. Thank you. But yeah, so I'm, I'm studying. Uh, I'm studying law through NISA. And is there uh, and is there intent to to do something in law? Or is uh, that? Nah. Was it I guess kind of uh, it's just point? one of those things, you know, get a degree so that uh, at least I have one. Yes. I think it's important to a lot of people. I mean, I have my own opinion about it, but to a lot of people, <laughs> it's important to have a degree. Okay, cool. And uh, anything else? Any hobbies? Anything you like to do when you're not uh, carballing? I coach uh, hockey and I coach swimming. When I was younger, I did a lot of sports. Um, like, I was a very, uh, I'd say, competitive swimmer. Um, I did that until maybe high school. So I was, I was decent at the sport. Mm. Uh, and then I got into high school and like I found hockey and I actually fell in love with the sport. It's still to the day, to to this day, it's still my favorite sport. Uh, so I coach that. That sport, that sport, I'm very passionate about. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't lie, swimming, I I'm not too passionate about. But I coach both of them. I was very good at both of them. It's a primary school. Uh, it's actually my primary school. Oh wow. Okay. How cool is that? It's really cool. Uh, I enjoy. It. It's it's fulfilling. I enjoy it. It's it's nice. And then rule one: yes or no. <clears throat> Um, this is kind of a uh, do as I say and don't do as I do kind of uh, uh, always, always, always yes, <laughs> always yes. Uh, okay, but uh, but okay. So in a competitive situation, is it something you would do? Region, uh, region, uh, region uh, the next regional that comes up. I do not respect the, uh, the rule one. I'll be honest. I just yeah, I, my my mind is purely focused on the result. The rule one comes second, so no. All right, so let's talk about your ambitions. What what are your ambitions in Rocket League right now? So sure, short term, I'd say yeah, uh, be Pirates, uh, do well in these regionals. Medium term, qualify for wildcard. Long term, probably <coughs> competes internationally somewhere. Somewhere along the line, I like to compete against all these players I've uh, looked up to for the past, I don't know how many years, three years, four years. That's probably my long term goal. With Psionics announcing Sub-Saharan Africa as a region, did that change your approach to Rocket League? I don't think so. Uh, I, I, you know, it's I, maybe it's a bit, uh, I'm too moan horn, but I think if you ask a lot of the players in the scene, you know, like in terms of how much grinding, like I actually, you know, put into the game, it has it, never changed. Like I think it's always been a consistent level with or without like incentive, but I obviously it put more focus a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Do you think it'll be a possibility for South Africans to make a living from Rocket League, Compe like competitive Rocket League, at some point over the next, so let's uh, call it three years? So, yeah, I think that's definitely something that's possible. Uh, it's not going to be, you know, I, this is something I've I've believed in for the longest time. Sonyx has given us everything we need. It's now up to the player base and the community to make sure we 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 maximize this, this opportunity we've given. So yeah, I think if uh, we are interested and we show that we are, you know, <laughs> we are here to uh, we are here to play and actually compete, then I think Sonyx will keep imp you know keep putting money to the region. Okay. You know, I, I I did a little bit of uh, maths and you know, the, the money that Sonyx have put into the game is like two percent of their prize pool. It's nothing. Yes. So assuming their prize pool is going to get bigger and bigger every year, so let's say next will be eight million dollars or even ten million dollars. Yeah. Um, 2%, you know, it's still nothing. So I think what will happen is if they think, okay, this region has potential, they'll put in like maybe 5%. And with 5%, that's double the amount mm. that's really here, or maybe triple the amount. And um, that's not even a lot, a lot of money. But that means we'll go from, you know, 2 million Rand into the game to 6 million Rand into the game mm. within like a year. And honestly, that becomes a whole different ball game. Salaries will go up. Orcs will be interested. I think it, what it will do, and this is maybe a bit optimistic, but it will improve the overall esports scene in South Africa. I think currently it's the biggest esports in South Africa in terms of money-wise. And what will get us closer to being competitive internationally? So I, I, I think a lot of people would answer that, oh, we need international exposure, but, but I kind of disagree. Um, I mean, those those uh, those 
those regions didn't get good by playing like Europe. You know, they got good by themselves internally. And the reason they did that was because there was competition. Okay. Um, so that's my first answer: is we need internal competition. We need players being driven to play as best as they can. Otherwise, their spot will be taken. I mean, if you look at Europe, being a top 32 team or top 64 team, it's an achievement. Like it's yes. something they work towards. Even if they don't make main event, like top 32 is is a big deal, and just shows you how competitive it is in those regions. So that's my first step. I think. Um, we need pit players and teams to, to come and grind and push each other, and that's how we get better. Uh, and with the money, that's how it starts. So this is the first step towards that. We just need to fulfill that, you know. When will you beat Pirates? When will we beat Pirates? Yep. Well, I think uh, I have a good quote, you know. If you, um, if you can prove gods can bleed, they'll uh, cease to exist, right? <laughs> so we've... Uh, We've definitely shown we can we can make them bleed. I mean, you've, everyone sees it. You know, like mm. it's it's something that's that's not it's, it's present. I think the biggest thing that that separates um, everybody in the scene right now is the mentality. I think everyone goes into the game trying to be parts. Oh, we should be parts. We can be parts. Everyone thinks that, but doesn't beat them. So there's yes. some mentality shift that we need to have. When will we beat them? Hopefully uh, this regional. I think um, myself and my team have done a lot to. When I say a lot, I mean we've done a very uh, in depth. Um, like approach to the way we mentally uh, uh, approach the game. Yes. So, I think this this regional, whenever we play it again, will be you, you know keep an eye out keep an eye out on uh, on Provada because honestly it's gonna be it's gonna be a very uh, a very good series. And you've just now reminded me I need to say a big up on getting picked up by Bravada. Uh, water becomes Bravada. That's such a that's a huge thing, and it speaks to what you were just saying about the involvement of orgs and and players in the community. To make Rocket League mm. bigger, so that's that's a huge step forward, and, and big oh, up to you. you and your team. Thank you, I appreciate. It. Happy meal. I, I I wish you luck in your adventures going forward, uh, especially with the regional coming up, and I hope you make massive strides into unseating the uh, the resident champions and becoming regional champions yourself. So good luck. Wow, thank you. I definitely uh, I will take that luck, and we'll, we'll give it our best shot. Honestly.